All right, good to see you. Thank you for joining us tonight for our last night of Vacation Bible School. Who does not have one of these and you'd like one? Does anybody not have one? We can get you one later on the way home. Okay, good. That's what we'll do tonight. So you can follow the program and we'll make our way right through. We've had a really good week and thank you especially to all the workers and we're grateful for the good times that we have had. There are pictures on the website for every night, and there are videos for each day, and you can take a look at that. And we're going to have the children sing in just a moment after we pray, and they're going to quote some Bible verses, and then we'll kind of do a little overview of what we did through the week, and, and then we'll give out some awards, and we'll go next door. And uh, By the way, we don't have pizza. We decided on peanut butter and jelly, if that's okay. Oh, you should have... You should have seen some of these faces. No, it should be pizza if Mr. Andrew gets it, okay? He's, he's going to get it, so. Anyway, all right, let's bow our heads, okay? We'll pray together tonight. Father, thank you for children. That's how we all started. We get to invest in little ones now, and we're so grateful for each of these that came from the youngest to the oldest one that participated. And we pray, again, that you would use your word in this amazing, dark day in which we live, would you give light to these children and draw them to yourself, help them to know you and love you and live for you so that their life is not full of the heartaches of sin. And we praise you for Jesus, that he died on the cross and rose from the grave so that our sin debt could be fully paid by him. We could never pay it, and we're so grateful. Bless each one who came tonight, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, children. The children can come first, the little ones. No, no, the older ones, right? The older ones come first. Older ones in the back. Sorry. They have five songs. Through the week, we learned about Jonah, and this song is about him. So there's a good truth to this. As you kiddos sing, you better do it.
the hardest part about that was how fast it went and getting all those words out, right? But you did a good job. This one is a um, slower, more serious kind of song, and, uh, but it's a great challenge. Maybe not really slow, I guess, but it's a challenge. Two more. This one, do you know my Jesus? And then we'll do their, I think, their very favorite. <laughs> Good, and I will just say, for the boys and girls, I hope you remember that song as long as you live. All those questions and answer them the right way. Okay, we don't have enough time for this one. So, no, we do, we do, we do. They really like this song, and uh, there's some actions to it. So here we go. And yelling at the end is why they like it so much, right? <laughs> okay, so they also work through five memory verses, and they learned one each night. And so the first ones, they know a little bit better, but hopefully they will do a good job on this. And I really liked that picture. And I hope that you guys would be that excited about knowing and understanding and then practicing what God says. Okay, five different memory verses. Great, great job. Thank you very much. Go ahead and you can get your seats. And uh, one of the things that we did was we had a continuing story. Uh, it was about a missionary named Hudson Taylor who served in China. And Mrs. McAvoy took care of doing this for us. And so she's going to come and kind of give a little bit of a review. And uh, I think that'll be about right there. And hang on just a minute here, Jan. 
this will be good. That way we'll get you. Thank you. Hudson Taylor was born in Barnsley, England on May 21st, 1832. He was born into the home of devout Christian parents. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Ah. There you go. Okay, thanks. He was born into the home of devout Christian parents. His father, who was a pharmacist, had a great burden for people to go to China to be missionaries and to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Often at their supper tables, Hudson's father would talk about the needs of many people in China. Look here, here is a map of China. Isn't that cool? I mean, China is so huge, isn't it? And you see some of the other countries around it. I'm not sure if you can. Mongolia, India, Myanmar, Vietnam, Laos. So that was the area that Hudson's father was just burdened for. And he would tell them, there are millions of people in China who don't know anything about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hudson's parents, before he was born, they prayed that if God would give them a son, that maybe someday their son would go to China to be a missionary. Well, but Hudson was a sickly little boy. There they are at their supper table talking. He was a sickly little boy. In fact, because he was sickly, he never went to traditional school until he was 11 years old. He was taught at home, however, by his good and godly parents. So here he was as a little boy, and when his father would talk about, oh, I'd love for missionaries to go to China, Hudson would say, I'll be a missionary to China. Of course, that probably made his parents' hearts very happy. But as Hudson got older, sadly, his love for the Lord began to grow cold. He really desired to have riches, a fine horse, and a big house. Like other English boys of his day, when Hudson was 13 years old, he had to go to work. He worked at his father's workplace. Now his father was a pharmacist, and his father taught him how to make, measure, and mix medicines. One day, when Hudson was 17 years old, he had the day off work and he was looking for something to read. He found a little Bible book that talked about the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. On that very day, Hudson repented of his sins and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as his own personal savior from his sins. From that time on, Hudson was a changed person. He not only had the background of a Christian home, he had Christ Jesus in his heart. No, he was not perfect. Hudson still had struggles with sin, as we all do. In fact, sometimes Hudson was so burdened that he could not live better for Christ that he would beg Jesus to help him live better for him. But Hudson kept close to the Lord. He read his Bible, he prayed, he confessed his sins as he was aware of them, and he told people about Jesus. Here's a picture of Hudson and his sister Amelia. On Sunday afternoons after tea, they would take literature about the Bible with them and they would talk to people about the Lord together. As Hudson worked for the Lord, God put on Hudson's heart the desire to go to China. There are too many stories to fit in 10 minutes to tell you of the adventures of Hudson Taylor as he prepared to go to China. When he was 21 years old, Hudson sailed on a boat to China. The voyage took five months. When Hudson land landed in Shanghai, he was so thrilled that the Lord had helped him get to China. The voy oh, I did tell you that, I'm sorry where he could serve God. He found a place to stay with some missionaries. He began to learn the Chinese language and eventually he decided to dress like the Chinese people so that he would not stick out like a sore thumb 
with his English clothes and thereby draw more attention to himself and the way he dressed rather than to the message he was preaching about Jesus. Over the years, Hudson still had times of sickness. But during these times, even when he sometimes had to travel back to England for a period of time, Hudson would pray for God to send more missionaries to China. Hudson lived to be 73 years old. He began the China Inland Mission when he was only 33 years old in 1865. From that time until the communists took over China in 1949, many missionaries went to China under the leadership of that mission. Today, even though China has still remained closed to missionaries, it has not been closed to God. By means of radio and literature, and by the witness of faithful Christians, Chinese Christians, Christ Jesus is still being preached. And many missionaries are going to China in other occupations, such as by teaching English to Chinese people, and thereby witnessing for Christ when they have an opportunity to do so. In fact, that is just what Brother Aaron and Grace Silos and their children did in China for six years. You may want to ask them more about that. I will close with one story that I did not get to tell the children this week. When Hudson and his wife Maria were working with the Chinese people, Hudson would preach to the people in the bottom room of their small attic apartment. One night, a Mr. Ni, nee, who was a leader of idol worshipers, happened to pass by the open door of the chapel. That is Hudson and his wife Maria, a very sweet Chinese English teacher whom God brought across his pathway. So here's Mr. Ni. Nee. He passed by the open door of the chapel. A bell was ringing, and the people were going out inside. Someone told Mr. Ni nee that a teacher was going to talk about God, so Mr. Ni nee went in. You see, even though Mr. Ni nee was a leader of idol worshipers, he was worried about his own sins. He was worried and afraid because he did not know what would happen to him after he died. Perhaps these people can tell me the things that I long to know, he thought. Hudson Taylor explained that the one true God loved the world so much that he sent his only son to earth. Jesus suffered and died on the cross to pay for the wrong things that sinners have done. Jesus was buried, and three days later, he rose again from the dead. Then Hudson Taylor added, God forgives the sins of those who believe on his son. He gives them everlasting life. Mr. Nee's eyes were shining with wonder. He had never heard anything like this before. He believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal savior. But later on, he asked Hudson a serious question. After learning that in Hudson's home country, people had known of this message of Jesus for hundreds of years, Mr. Nee asked Hudson, why did you not send people sooner to tell us this message? My father looked for the truth for over 20 years, and he died without finding it. We tried to encourage the children this week to give their lives to Christ. The song that they sang, A Simple Offering, is a good prayer for all of us to pray to the Lord. One day, if we are saved, we will see the Lord Jesus face to face. Until then, let's give Jesus everything of our lives, our treasures, our talents, our time, and our love. Amen. All right. Thank you, Jan. Let me see here. We'll go right there. And... Uh, one of the things that the kids really liked, as well as the stories and all, is um, at the end of every day when Jenna's told the story, she got right, tried to get right to a really significant part, and then said, you have to come back tomorrow. <laughs> so anyway, that was kind of fun. You didn't have to do that today. 
we had a bird in this building this week. It was just a puppet. But anyway, its name was Salty, and uh, Captain Sailor had conversations with Salty, so they're going to come now and do that. All right, looking good, looking good. Hmm. Make sure everything is ship shape here. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a new, okay. Well, let's uh, do a final check here before we go into port. <clears throat> let's see, main deck, still here. Ocean, still there. Aft sail, hmm, still no aft sail. Oh, wow. Seems like we've picked up a few more passengers since we left. <laughs> Don't know how that's possible. But since you're here, welcome aboard. I'm Captain Sailor, and you're aboard the... Kids, what's the name of the ship? Say it! VBS. The VBS Mercy! That's right! You know, like any ship in the ocean, we've seen our storms come by. But like any storm that you might encounter, there's one thing that you can always rely on. The word of God. And so we've been learning about God's mercy through Bible verses, which you've already heard. But I'm not the only one on the ship. Kids, let's call our friend Salty. Salty! Salty, Salty there you are. We're so glad to see you. Glad to see you too, Captain Sailor. Wow, look at all those new passengers. Did we stop by an island and pick them up? No. Did we rescue them from a shipwreck? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe they flew in like me. Well, however they got here, we should welcome them. How should we do that? Well, maybe we should talk a little bit more about you. That sounds good. Do you like crackers, Salty? How else would I like them? Uh, salty? Yes. Uh, no, I say, do you like crackers, Salty? They certainly taste better that way. Which way? Salty. Captain! What are you doing? Oh, I thought we were calling our names. I think they know those by now. Okay, so do you like crackers plain? I'd rather have them on the boat. Well, of course you'd eat them on the boat. I've never even been on a plane. Who said anything about a plane? You did. I did? And you're not even a pilot. All right, this isn't about me. So you like plain crackers? No, I like boat crackers. What? Wait, salty boat crackers? Exactly. Oh, well now I'm really confused. Um, oh boy. Pretty no. bird. It's all right. We've had a good week here, Salty. We've had the VBS Mercy, we've been in a storm, we've cleaned up after it, and you learned a valuable lesson about Mercy. That's right. And I was really upset when the storm messed up my crow's nest and I got my cracker soggy. Soggy, soggy salty boat crackers? Exactly. <laughs> and it was the word of God that changed my heart. What verse was that? It was Psalm 103.8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. That is a great truth, that God's mercy will never run out and he's very patient, even though we deserve to be punished for our sins. Captain? Yes, Salty? What is God waiting for? Now, he's waiting for people to admit their sin and turn to him. If you turn, the only way to Jesus is if you turn to him and trust him. That's great news. It sure is. God's gift is available to any of you right now if you turn to Jesus and trust him. You will be able to enjoy God's eternal mercy. That's Captain? Yes, Salty. I like crackers. I know, Salty. Can I have some while we take a walk on the deck before we go back to port? That's a wonderful idea. Oh, nice. It's a beautiful night out. Yeah, it sure is. Have a cracker. Oh, oh it's soggy. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Oh, well. I think they went to a higher level tonight. That was just a blessing. And, uh, yeah, maybe Salty will be next door. You might be able to go talk to her yourself after when we go next door. You could actually meet Salty and shake her wing. All right. So, uh, thank you, Salty. I mean, uh, 
So, so this week uh, we spent, as I already mentioned, we spent a, a, most of our Bible time in the uh, book of Jonah. And so this is pretty much review for most of you, and I think probably pretty much re review for even folks who are here for the first time tonight, our adults. So we'll, uh, we'll just talk about a couple of things here for a few minutes. We saw Jonah running from God and hiding from God and then getting mercy from God and then angry with God. It's kind of an interesting uh, story of how that happened. And, and, and he's going through all these different like phases and circumstances and difficulties in his life. And of course, we all can be very tempted, no matter our spiritual background, or no matter our sincerity, or no matter our character, our training, our education, our talents, our gifts, whatever, we can all be tempted to try to run from God or hide from God, or even sometimes be angry with God as things come into our lives that we wish he would not have allowed. We are not unlike Jonah. In fact, we're much more like Jonah than like God. But if all we learn from the book of Jonah is about this troubled man, Jonah, then we really missed it. Because the book of Jonah, like all the rest of the Bible, is not just about the people, it's about God and how God worked in their lives. And so we read about Jonah to see how God worked and how he reacted. And uh, if we humbly talk to the Lord about it, privately, personally, uh, openly, honestly, uh, we can learn from other people's lives instead of going through the school of hard knocks ourselves. God is a merciful judge. When the children quoted the verses and they were projected, uh, perhaps you noticed, maybe not, but every one of those verses talks about mercy. Mercy is something that we only get to enjoy if we first admit that we're guilty. If a person was to go and stand before a judge and maybe that person had been arrested for some crime, whether it was a huge felony or if it was just running through a stop sign or something, um, you know, if, if that person says to the judge, I am not guilty, I did not do that, the officer is wrong, or the stop sign was wrong, or, or whatever, and blames anything other than himself, there is no mercy. We have to accept judgment, we have to admit our guilt, before there's any basis for saying, I'm wrong, but please have mercy on me. God is judge, and a lot of times he gets, I'm going to say, kind of a bad rap because he is the judge, the only true judge. He made everything after all, and not only that, but he came to this earth, his son, the Lord Jesus, and lived a perfect life and proved that the problem is not God's creation of humanity. No, 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 no. This, this human Jesus lived without sin to prove that the problem is not God or what he created or any weakness that he created in us. No, the problem is our own self-will and our desire to go our own way instead of follow and submit to our wonderful God. This judge is merciful. If we come to this judge and we admit our need and our guilt and our shame and our culpability and, and our sin and our failures and all of that, if we come to him without pretense, but we just come and we're honest and we're humble and we say, the Bible's right and I've blown it. Then we get to experience this judge's mercy. Otherwise, we stand before him naked. We stand before him without excuse. We stand before him condemned already. Jonah ran from this merciful judge, but God went after him. We learned that. Jonah tried to hide from God, but God saw him. This is true of all of us. Uh, Jonah prayed. Amazing. He's hiding. He's running. But when he prayed, God answered him. Amazing. And God delivered him. And then when God delivered others, that's when Jonah got angry because God had been good to people that were not good people. People that God said, you have 40 days or else. And they repented. 
they turned around. They, they did not say, yeah, it's not going to happen. They believed God, and they, and they were willing to say, I, I am guilty. And so they got mercy. But Jonah's response to that was to get angry, angry at God, and to pout. He didn't get his own way, and so he, he kind of pouted. And when that happened, Jonah ran, God went after him, Jonah hid, God saw him, and Jonah prayed, and God answered him, and then Jonah pouted, and God reasoned with him. God spoke to him. Actually, we, we learned about God makes this miraculous plant grow, and, and then God gets a common worm to chew on it, and down it goes, and, and Jonah was so upset about that plant. And God said, you, you know, you did nothing for that plant. You didn't earn it. You didn't build it. You didn't do, plant it. You did, you did nothing for that plant. It came up in a day, and it went away in a day. You invested nothing in that. But he said, I, God, have invested in all of these 100,000 people, six score thousand people, the Bible says, 120,000 people. And that wasn't all of them. Because it's 120,000 people, the Bible says, could not discern between their left hand and their right. And that has to be either very young children or people who have a mental disability, it seems to me. And God said, man, I, I created them. I've sustained them. I've helped them. I, I, I warned them. They have repented. And you don't think I should have mercy on them. God reasoned with them. That's because he is a merciful judge. And he reasons with all of us. Every single one of us in the room tonight, God is reasoning with us. He's giving us light, like right here. Giving us light, giving us truth. It's a mistake to compare ourselves with Jonah and say, wow, what a nutcase. Glad I'm not that bad. It's a mistake to compare ourselves favorably to, Joseph, to Jonah. What we need to do is compare ourselves with perfect Jesus and humbly recognize that our very best efforts come up so feebly short. And then ask him for mercy. And this gracious God will certainly give it. Have you ever admitted your sin to God and trusted this merciful judge? Because if you haven't, the night can be the night. Just humble yourself, not before me or anyone else, but before God. And God promises that he will listen. Remember, God's mercy is an end point. There is a time when it is too late. We can't wait till we stand before God in eternity and then say, I didn't believe down there when I heard that Hanover Baptist Church. I didn't then, but, but, but I want to now. It will be too late then. Now is the day of salvation. I would encourage you, if you have any questions, please talk to one of us. We'd love to meet with you in private, whenever. And, and uh, we put on the back of the bulletin some, uh, some simple Bible verses that you could read that might be a big help. What the Bible teaches. God made everything. He loves everyone. And every one of us puts ourselves first. God sent Jesus to fix that. And Jesus put others before himself. He died for others. He rose from the dead. We can be forgiven. And then, and only then, we can follow the Lord Jesus, and we can put others first. Would you bow your head with me? Close your eyes. And our Father in heaven, thank you for the word of God so clear. Thank you that you have declared to us both your role as judge of all, but also that you are abundant in mercy, and that you delight in mercy. You do not begrudge uh, forgiving us. You love to. I pray if there's any boy or girl here tonight, or, or adult, who has not yet honestly admitted their sin, their need, this eternal problem, and trusted Jesus as their Savior, they would do so tonight. We gave this invitation so you parents know the children. We had three different children this week who made very specific decisions and counsel. We thank God for that. I hope that if you have any question, you would let us be a help and a blessing and point you to the Bible. Then it's on you. We can't save anyone. Lord, 
We do thank you this night that you have graciously revealed yourself to us. The sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, all that there is that we look up and we can ignore or we can look up and see your handiwork. It all declares the glory of God. We have to work to ignore you. Lord, I pray that you administer to us today. Whoever there might be here that's running or hiding or angry with you, I pray that you would help them and help us to be a part of that help. Convince them that you're a wonderful God and that we are the problem. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now we have some awards to give out, and Mrs. Diana is going to come. Do you want an award? <laughs> All right, Diana's going to come, and she is kind of in charge of the awards while she gets her things ready. I'll say one other thing. We made a... Uh, one of these for you children, if you would like it, has the church name and all that on it, and a picture of Salty. You could get, maybe Salty would sign that for you, I don't know. But it's a picture from last night, and we'll have those for you when you go to leave. Diana, do you need help? You okay?
will go next door. What's that? Uh, we're not, we're not going to have organized games tonight, but there'll probably be some. But um, I just wanted to add my thanksgiving to all of you workers. Uh, I counted this up. There's over 30 names on there, and uh, all kinds of people before it started, through the day. And uh, we had folks that did everything from locking up to opening up to lights and toilets and all the trash and all that sort of thing. So thank you very much. And, uh, but hey, guys, do you want to sing um, Can't Wait? Would you like to do that? Would you like to see your parents sing Can't Wait? Yes. Yeah, OK, come on up here again. And then you can watch. Now, you'll, you'll have to watch what they do. Come on. We'll stand up here. Go, 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 go. Good, Kevin, man, go ahead, man. All right, all right, come on ahead, and then we'll let the kiddos go next door and see if the pizza's there. I think it probably will be, and that's great. All right.